Hello everyone, and welcome to another light novel review. I am the rat, and this is The Rat's Nest. Today we are talking about a book that uh, I enjoyed. It, it, was, it was a solid book, uh, Reign of the Seven Spellblades, Volume 6. So, obviously been on a little bit of a uh, Reign of the Seven Spellblades kick, recently reading 4, 5, and then buying 6 and, and reading 6. Um, and if I had the money to spend on it, I would buy seven and eight and read them right now. Um, but that's a that's a little bit in the future. I got other books I gotta gotta work on for then. But ran, but that's beside the point. Rain and Seven Spell Blades, Volume Six. This was a good volume. Uh, so you had a couple different things going on coming into this volume off of Volume Five, which was my favorite up to this point in the series and still is. Uh, I, you know, I knew that it wasn't going to be the same action-packed whatever i mean you had oliver taking down one of the instructors on his revenge plan obviously it's gonna be hard to match that high with, with very many other plot points uh that they could bring up and also from reading the synopsis i kind of knew i was like okay this is gonna be a more dead diana ashbury uh focused brooms force kind of focused one i was like okay i came in with the expectation and you know it, it wasn't a bad book uh, i definitely had stuff that i enjoyed and it had stuff that i um wasn't as big of a fan of. Uh, this was, for all intents and purposes, a good book. It, it was a good book. I, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to sit here and ask, you know, and say like, oh, you know, it was a, it was a bad, it was, it's not a bad book, uh, but it had some stuff that I just, it didn't grab me. You know, like it wasn't bad. It just didn't grab me. It, there, there was one or two things that I was like, eh. Uh, kind of on, but I, I never expected this book to live up to to volume five, uh, in terms of of how much I just I enjoyed it and enjoyed the the book itself. Um, it, it was a very solid six book. I'm looking forward to where the series goes from here. Um, and yeah, so let's just get right into it. So, from remembering what my favorite parts of the book was obviously everything with Oliver, right? Where you learn, okay, he's grown about an inch or so. You learn that uh, after the fight, uh, he was still you know in a lot of pain they're just trying to keep him alive a little body double in and afterwards after everything's said and done his body has changed um and i really enjoyed this little plot point and we see we have a good little scene with him and Teresa. That, that's nice that, that's a that's a nice little dynamic there um but we get to see that he loses a fight to uh rossi right and the uh the sword arts whatever class sword art online that's so true <laughs> and he loses that fight and that's when we learn oh okay Bro can't, like, use magic. He's completely off. Like, his body is, like, basically completely different. Um, and that's a that's a big point. I really enjoyed everything they did with that throughout the book. Um, just from, you know, the realization of it to seeing how it affected him. Just kind of seeing, you know, his thoughts on it where he's like, you know, like, I've lost all my strength. You know, uh, all the strength that I've built up, you know, it's like to make me closer to mom, right? I, I've lost it, right? You know, I, I can't do anything else. And then seeing how that affects his uh, relationship with his friends. Um, it's cool. It's uh, it's cool stuff. Um, getting to see Nana O kind of step up. And, you know, th there's some very nice scenes with the two of them that I really enjoyed. Uh, just, you know, her, like, holding holding his hand and just being, like, you know, it's warm. And, and it's like, oh, that's nice. You know, they're like, ah, oh, it's nice. It's it's good stuff. I, I really do quite enjoy Oliver and Nana O's relationship. And kind of to see how how it's grown and, and how it continues to grow. They're 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 really some really fun characters to be around. So yeah, I mean I I, I loved all of that and especially the conclusion of it where they're in their base, um, and just you know going around and you know playing the tag. And so it's all over getting accustomed to his new body. And then we figure out what it is. It's not that his body changed. It's that he had an immense boost in mana circulation. I think that's how it's described. Basically, at the description that we know, obviously his friends don't know this, because of the soul merger and because he's literally been cutting down on his life, like he had to, like he had to physically, bro, bro said, grow up. <laughs> and bro had to grow up. So like literally, his body is is older now. Like 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 that's literally what happened as far as I understand it. Um, you know, maybe he won't like age, age, but his body's bigger. You know, he he can he's stronger now. He's faster. Uh, everything he's 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 definitely on a different level at this point because of that and i was like that's really interesting because so the soul merge as we know cuts down on his lifespan 
And now we're going to see the effects of it. At first, I was like, that's an interesting drawback. You know, you use the soul merge and you lose your own strength. I was like, so he's going to have to rely on it. But no, I actually really like this. I, I really like how it's like, yeah, you know what? You're actually you're getting stronger at baseline, too, because you're burning your life away. Right. Uh, spoilers for Hunter Hunter Chimera Ant, if you haven't seen it or care. Um it's kind of like Gon with his Nin Pledge, where he's like, you know, G give me everything all at once, right? Uh, g give me all my all my life supply of Nin for this one moment. It's kind of like that on like a smaller scale, where like he's getting older because like he's literally burning his life away. I think that's a fair drawback. I think that that is definitely a fair drawback to have him on, because one, the Soul Merge is incredibly powerful, right? It's in incredibly powerful. Obviously, that has its own drawbacks with the pain and stuff. Uh, but it also has the drawbacks of, you know, you're, you're burning your life away. And so as an extra benefit of that, you know, you're, you're getting, you know, marginally stronger, right? You're getting stronger at a rate that isn't normal. And I like that because yeah, I think that it follows a lot with the, the rules of this universe where it's like, yeah, no, like there's, there's some extremely risky stuff you could do, but it has potentially really good stuff. Uh, you know side effects right you know you kind of look at Morgan a little bit you know what would have happened if he had controlled the tear fire I don't think there was any chance of it um, but you know, you know it's it's the risk and reward and so Oliver obviously being very risky uh, but that was cool I really I really loved all that the the scene of them playing the the tag and then Oliver's little he's like he's like oh thank you and then Nano and him kiss it's like oh that's nice it's it's a good scene it's a good scene with all of them and I really I really do quite uh, I really did quite enjoy it I think that it's 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 very good and i wonder like are, are they now going to portray oliver and nano as like an official cup i mean they basically have been right um but now just all, all the oliver and nano stuff is, is always very good uh yuri the new character who's going to die next volume uh <laughs> i don't i don't i haven't read next volume i i don't know any spoilers i can tell you he's going to die though uh, because Bokuto Ono, at least so far, has been a big fan of introducing a character in one volume and then killing them in the next. Um, you know, other than our, our main cast and, and crew here. Uh, so Yuri's dying next volume. He's he's being built up. I think he's going to play a part in the climax next volume, probably. Um, he was interesting. He was an, an interesting little critter to see. Uh, his whole thing where he's like half the soul of one of the instructors is, is, is very interesting. Where it's like he's a spy and he doesn't even know it. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see kind of his character and, and what kind of interesting things Book to Ono can do with with that kind of character and that kind of setup for one. Um, I, I enjoyed him. He, he was written, you know, what you call it. Well, and I'll get into later where I think Book to Ono maybe dropped the ball a tiny bit with characters. Um, I he, he generally has a very good skill of, of introducing these, you know, volume to volume characters to kill them off and making them quite likable. You know, I mean, we saw it with Carly and Robert uh, in Volume 5 where I, I really enjoyed them. Like, I was genuinely disappointed to see them die. Uh, I don't think I'll be quite as disappointed to see Yuri die next volume. Okay, maybe he won't. Maybe he won't. Maybe he's breaking the cycle, right? I, I, feel, I feel like Yuri's probably going to die. Um, you know, I, I can't say I like him as much as I like Carly and Robert, uh, but Carly and Robert I, I did really enjoy, and I think they were written very well. And I, I enjoyed Yuri. I enjoyed his little, like, kind of rivalry kind of whatever with Oliver where it's like oh you know like like this kid's legit it, it's interesting it's also interesting uh you know I think Buck Dono could do a, a lot of very interesting things with the way his character is set up um and yeah so those are the two big things and now we get to the main crux of this volume I kind of knew it would be the main crux of it um but I was still a little bit uh disappointed admittedly the, all the broomsport stuff Diana Ashbury all that stuff right I wasn't a big fan. Before I talk about that, actually, I just remembered you have all the election stuff, too. That's interesting enough. I think that's going to be a big thing over the next couple volumes. Uh, maybe maybe next volume, seven. Maybe it goes to eight. Um, you know, maybe. Uh, th that was interesting enough. You know, you have Godfrey, who I think is a very interesting character. Uh, I, I feel like he's probably going to die at some point to establish the uh, the threat of something. Uh, just because he's being set up as a I can't lose kind of character, and I really like him. I, I really like Godfrey. Uh, you know, if he died, that would suck. Uh, I am, I am, you know, oh, uh, I do, I do quite like him. I'm looking forward to seeing how he's used in the future. Uh, the rest of the candidates, uh, Milligan's probably going to become president, and I like her enough. Um, she's she's a fun enough character. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing her again in season one of the anime. Um, 
because at the time of recording, the anime hasn't aired yet. Uh, that's that's going to age the video a little bit. I, I don't know when this is coming out. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing her again in the anime. Right, to, to kind of, you know, get re reintroduce to her character. I like her enough. Uh, her being the student council president would be cool. I will say the other faction I'm not as huge on. Like the... Uh, the the one led by the uh, the the burnt blonde guy with the canonically massive schlong, uh, that was a very odd scene that I was like, okay, uh, you know, I, I guess Bokudono just has a has a penchant for that. You know what? What can I say? <laughs> um, uh, but I, I can't say I'm as huge on them. Uh, they just. I mean, I understand that like a lot of, of, of the villains in uh, Reign of the Seven Spellblades are going to be kind of simpler, and that was certainly the case earlier on. Um, but but whenever you can write villains like Enrico Forgieri, uh, who I really enjoyed, uh, you know, I think I am just going to be a bit disappointed by the by the one note. Ooh, we we hate this guy, and we want to get back in power. I think you could do more interesting with that. Uh, with the with the power struggle, you know, make make genuine sides on both on both sides. Um, I mean, I'm looking forward to to them losing, right? Like I'm looking forward to Milligan being president. Maybe they win. Uh, I don't I don't know. Um, you know, Bukadono can do what he wants. Um, uh, I I'm just not huge on them. Uh, maybe they'll get more established later on. Uh, but just the. I don't know. I I, I, I think I think Bukto oh no, could have done better stuff with them maybe setting them up. Because right now they're just not too horrifically interesting, you know? Um, but who knows that that might change. Uh, I think all the little political intrigue is, is going to be interesting. Uh, I will say also before we get into the Broom Swords, there's, there's, there's a good deal in this volume. Uh, you have the whole scene with um, Oliver and Pete being uh, interrogated by Esmeralda. That was very cool. I really enjoyed getting to see Oliver kind of, you know, be face to face with her and be be, can, be interrogated and all that. And obviously, then we also get, um, you know, Nano coming in and and saving him, and that being another Nano and Oliver scene that I that I really enjoyed seeing. It's just all around really good stuff, really really good stuff. So, Room Sports, right? I I don't think it was handled terribly well. Diana Ashbury and uh, Dustin Morgan, I think his name is Morgan. I think it's Dustin. Dustin Morgan. Uh, Ashbury and Morgan are two characters introduced last volume, maybe volume four. I can't remember exactly when they were introduced. Um, that just wasn't fine. You know, uh, the, the classic book to Ono uh, character introduced and then they die. I didn't really see the death flags on Ashbury until the end. Um, even then, not just with the broom sports in general. It's interesting enough. It, it just it didn't grab me like other stuff in Reign of the Seven Spellblades. Um, and, and part of that could have been me coming off the tail of Volume 5 and, and even knowing, okay, you know, it's not going to be the same. But it's still it being, uh, you know, still maybe thinking, okay, this might be a little bit close, uh, you know. And, um, you know, may, maybe I subconsciously expected a bit more. Uh, the Brim Sports themselves are interesting, obviously kind of a, a sort of play on Quidditch. Uh, you know, go, going back to more the Harry Potter inspiration of the roots, um, it, it, it was interesting enough. Like I said, it never, never really grabbed me. Ashbury was never uh, a terribly interesting character enough to me to, uh, you know, to to have her come out and be uh, basically a main character for this volume. I, I just, I wasn't, I wasn't really grabbed. You know, I don't know if I can say that it's like bad writing or just stuff that I'm not interested in myself uh but she just never grabbed me and i i think something else that i was confused about was the broom league itself i, I probably just uh read too fast over a detail it's like it's the three events it's the speed the wars and then like the individual ones uh and like each one of them got a boost to the reward from the 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 esmeralda right um but we never saw the results of the individual fighting i don't think uh, obviously, the gray geese went on and and beat. Them. But I was like, I was like, well, isn't this like a, a thing? But then like they had the the racing event, but that was like a specialty thing. And then uh, Diana beat the record, and I was like, okay, well, yeah, I, you knew that was gonna happen. And then she didn't die. I I, I was just, I was a little. I mean, I was a little confused 
at the broom league itself uh because i thought i was like okay we're doing the 1v1 i was like maybe this is you know it's different from the broom wars uh maybe this is what it is and it's like i can see how it's like you know oh, it's the best the best broom rider is gonna win okay and like we ever saw the results i mean were we supposed i mean i i, I could have just over read read over some parts um i don't know i could just be forgetting something i mean I, I read this book over like a couple days four days i don't know it i mean i read it pretty fast three days i think it was three days i think i read it over three days um yeah i mean i just it just it left me a little bit confused and then yeah diane ashbury i i just i wasn't the biggest fan of, of her. it was fine right it was serviceable um i think what really is that she died at the end uh it, look uh, uh, Morgan, right, Dustin Morgan, I think his name is Dustin, Morgan, right, uh, consumed by the tear of fire, comes up, inspires her, okay, right, you knew that was going to happen. She breaks the record, okay, cool, she doesn't die, okay, cool, you know, maybe she'll, maybe she'll be around, be a little supporting character. Then he's completely consumed by the tear of fire. There's no other teachers at the stands, apparently. Um, and, but, like, while they're getting there, she's like, okay, I got this. Like, I understand that it's like, oh, their their hearts are connected, and it's like, oh, she... She doesn't have any purpose left in life, so she decided to uh, to to sacrifice herself for for you know to to take out Dustin. But it's like I don't know. Maybe that just seems a bit extreme. I guess that's the Kimberly way. I guess um, you know to uh, to do that. Like she didn't have anything left. You know he he was her heart, that kind of thing. So so she sacrificed herself to uh, to kill him and to to save everyone else okay i guess the thing is just she didn't have to die i i think you could have i think you could have worded written it differently to where there was some reason that she had to do it that because at least how i read it it was like well the teachers will get there but she's gonna get there first it's like well i mean the teachers could take care of it without anyone dying like like it were people in a, like i i i don't remember reading that people were in immediate danger like i mean the teachers were gonna get there in a second um, you know, uh, and also, you know, why were there no teachers out on the thing that could do stuff? Uh, I, I don't know. It, it confused me a little bit. Uh, I think it could have been done better. Do I think it was horrible? No, it's, it's far from the worst stuff I've read in, in light novels. I mean, it was, it was okay. Right. Like I, I get, I get where uh book to Ono was coming with it. It, it just, I, I don't think it fully sat right with me just cause I was like, well, she didn't have to do that. It, you know, like looking back on some other deaths, right? I admittedly can't remember Carlos is too well. Ophelia had to be killed, right? And then looking at uh, Carly and Robert, who I think are probably the golden standard for it, they had to die. Like like Robert and his crew had to die to defeat Deus Ex Machina. Like that was the plan that they came up with during the time that Oliver gave them. Like they had to die. Curse users are objectively the most effective after they die. That was the only way they were ever going to really be able to curse an object like Deus Ex Machina. And then Carly and her crew going up and quad canting to open it up to get Enrico out. And then quad canting destroying you. I like. I think that that's a really cool drawback of quad canting as just an example of why people don't do it. Like, okay, you can double cant. You could probably triple cant. Some people might die triple canting, but a quad cant, you're going to die. Right? Maybe some people can quad cant and not die. But I like the idea that the, the, this extreme power has drawbacks, right? So, so you're forced to, to use other stuff. Uh, I think that their deaths were, like, they, they needed to die. They, you know, Robert and his crew needed to die to curse the object. And Carly and them needed to use the quad cant, and that's going to kill them. Uh, and so, like, I think that that was the deaths done well. Uh, Clifton Morgan dying, uh, Clifton, I think it's dust, uh, Morgan, right? I can't, I don't know what, my, what you call it. Morgan dying, we knew it was going to happen. I, I just, I, I think they could have written it where Ashbury had to sacrifice herself, you know? And, and she just, she just didn't have to. I don't know. Maybe I'm being too harsh on it. I really did enjoy this book. Like I said, I, I get it. I think it just didn't sit right with me, uh, just because I'm, uh, what you call it? I don't know just because i'm an idiot i guess it, it just it didn't sit right for me people probably read this and loved it um and i'm just being and i'm just being weird uh but i'm still very much looking forward to volume seven uh you know like i said uh there there was a lot of great stuff in here that i that i let off with all the oliver stuff i think was phenomenal uh it's just the the broom sword stuff i think maybe dropped the ball a little bit especially with uh ashbury and uh, ashbury's character or i i don't know she just never grabbed me 
It just never grabbed me. Uh, but the Oliver stuff very much did. I'm very much looking forward to Volume 7. I read the synopsis online. Apparently, they're third years. So that means we're getting roughly three volumes per year. So that means we might get roughly 21 volumes of Reign of the Seven Spellblades. Um, and uh, I can't believe I just made the connection. There's seven years, seven instructors. He's going to kill an instructor per year, right? Um, cool. That works for me. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking for. I think uh, Volume 7 is going to focus on Yuri a little bit. Cool. I'm looking forward to it. Um, it it's going to be interesting going forward, seeing seeing everyone again. Um, I, I really like all these characters. I really like where all the characters are are headed. I think their development is, is, is very good. Obviously, looking forward to seeing more Oliver. Looking forward to seeing him uh, more as Null. Uh, like I, I knew that Volume 6 was never going to live up to Volume 5's expectations. Uh, but now I'm going into uh, Volume 7 with uh, with basically no expectations. Not like in a bad way. Not like in a bad way. But it's like, okay, I, I've, been brought, I've been brought back down to earth from how much I really loved Volume 5. Um, where there's still a, there's still a ton of stuff to love in Reign of the Seven Spellblade, but not every not every volume is going to be like it. I'm not saying that Volume Six is, is awful, but yeah, you, know, you know you can't have a Volume Five every volume, or else Volume Five isn't going to be special. You know that that kind of thing. Uh, there's just uh, just objectively there's going to be more impactful story beats than others, um, and so I'm very much looking forward to Volume Seven, getting to see them in Year Three, and and getting to see how they evolve as magicians more. Um, hopefully we get a little bit, uh, we get to see more of the, uh, the sword roses themselves. Well, we didn't really get to see them this volume. We got to see them a little bit, uh, with the, uh, the, the, the tag and kind of with some of the Oliver stuff. I, 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 I hope next we get to see, we get to see more of them. I think that, uh, they're, they're an interesting little group, an interesting dynamic. Uh, and I'm very much looking forward to it. I don't know when I'll get to it because the next light novel review I do will be Mishoka Tensei volume 12, 100%. That is the next one that is going up. It's it's happening. I'm gonna wait a second on volume seven and eight, uh, just because I I don't want to spend the money on it right now, and I have a lot of other books that I can read, and I want to get back into Mashoku Tensei because it is uh, peak fiction. <laughs> so uh, if you're this far in the video, obviously if there's something you like, so make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment telling me what your favorite part of this volume was, uh, or maybe calling me an idiot because I didn't care for the room sports section. Uh, like I said, the next light novel review will be Mashoku Tensei volume twelve. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all enjoyed the next one. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.